Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. It has been a little while, but I seem to say that at the beginning of all my videos, but this time I really mean it. It's been a very long time. But I've had quite a few people recently requesting help with Rotary Craft. And this has been in person, or people I play with on the server, just in general. A lot of people seem very confused about several different aspects of it, as much as to even stay away from it when necessary. So what I thought I'd do is I'll put together a tutorial based on all you need to get started and beyond really. But I'm going to break it down into tiers and I'm going to do this using the magnetostatic engines. Now these chaps, for those who don't know, convert RF, redstone flux, which is the most common power source, into rotational energy which you can use in the rotary craft machines. Now these are, as of recently, upgradable, and they start off at tier north and go all the way up dun 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 dun, to dun dun dun, the godlike tier, tier 5. Now, as you can see, this one uses a significant amount of energy, and unless you've got proper uh, reactor craft reactors going, you're not going to be able to run this thing very easily. Oops. Uh, anyway, no idea what that was. Um, so... I will show you in this video the first few tiers up to tier 3 and then save the rest for another video. So to get started you have the basic magnetostatic engine. I haven't bothered to put in the crafting recipes for all of these because if I I realized while making the video if I showed you how to craft every single item A I'd be insulting your intelligence for not being able to use any eye and B it would just take twice as long. But these, they start off, there's one crafting recipe for one of the engines, and that's tier zero. The rest of them you have to build these upgrades for, and I'll explain those as I go. But a quick note is, after level, after tier one, you need a coolant, and that is liquid nitrogen, and that is via the refrigeration unit, of which I will go into later, because, as things stand, there's no point in using either of these engines up until tier 2, even more, maybe even tier 3, so there's no point in making the coolant until you are high enough up. Right, so, to begin, I've put everything in nice little set out rooms, until I got bored of doing that and did other stuff. So the very first thing you want to do in Rotary Craft is basically build the steam engine, and that is, me uh, no wait, hang on, sorry, start again. Basically you want to build the blast furnace, and that is one of these chaps. Now, it's made quite simply, I did a couple of recipes for the very basics, it's made quite simply by doing eight stone bricks around the redstone. So you're not going to be starting on this stuff until you've piled down to the redstone level, or if you're using Iguana tweaks for Tinker's Construct, until you've leveled up a little bit. So once that's done, you have the blast furnace. Now the blast furnace itself is sat on top of a lava block, and it needs that to heat it up and it stays at 630C unless you have some external additions which I'll go into later as well which can heat it up further as you can see this isn't much of the temperature. Now the first thing you've got to note is that in here you can turn coal into coal coke, there's some I made earlier by filling that up. These are additives down here which you won't need to use for this but if you do 9 in here then it will in each action create nine output, which saves a lot of time for just sticking them in a stack and having one output at a time. So coal coke is usable for all the usual smelting stuff, I believe. But its main use is in this. If you put coal coke here with sand and gunpowder, you can make HSLA steel, which is the main ingredient used in every aspect of rotary craft. You'll go through stacks of the stuff. And if you use coal instead of coal coke, then for every one of these you put in here, you'll get one output. But if you use coal coke, you've got a chance of multiplying up your output here. Uh, bonus output, yes. These are also the chances of using up sand. Oh, that's the first time I've actually done that. <laughs> these are the chances of using up sand and using up gunpowder each output. So as you can see, it's produced them, but I've still got all of those. So if I fill that up with that, <coughs> you'll see that every now and again I will get more than nine returned. Come on, come on, give me more than nine. 
Oh, it's making me into a liar. But you can also see it's not using up that much sand or gunpowder, just a cold coke, which it'll do every time. Come on, give me more than nine. Ugh, a bit more, okay. Um, anyway, so let's move on from there. The next thing you need to do is once you've got the steel, you can make the work table, which is made like that. And this is the work table where all of the rotary craft building um, unit, I'm not talking about blocks, are actually made. Without this, you can't really do much. There's quite a few crafting recipes that are components for those items that can be made in normal crafting grids, but the work table is essential. So as you can see, here's the work table. It's got the usual input grid here, and then the output grid here. As you can see here, I have put in the steam engine. Now the steam engine is the very first engine I ever make in Rotary Craft. I don't, I'm not saying it's the best one for everyone to do straight away, there are others, but this one is my main workhorse for everything Rotary Craft basic. And this is how it's made. You've got standard cobblestone, base panels, shaft units, all of this. You can have copper or gold there, obviously I choose copper because it's cheaper, in theory. To make the uh, condenser, you need liquid pipes and uh, the steel. As you can see, this is one of the ones that can be made in a normal crafting grid. To make the liquid pipes, you saw back there, is made in a work table. And it's free standard glass with six steel. And then you've got the other things like the base panels are free across, the shaft units are free diagonally, and you've got in here you need an impeller, which is HSLA, H, yeah, HSLA uh, steel gears, which are five of them, give you um, free gears in return, and then you add another four to that to give you one impeller, and then you have yourself a steam engine. I love these things. They do so much for me. Now, a quick note about these. The steam engine takes a constant input of water, for which I've got the um, Ender IO reservoirs there. You can take any input you like for these, as long as it's a steady flow of water. Yeah, that's not quite what I meant. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it was just playing me up there. Anyway, um, steady influx of water. There is, in fact, a pump that comes with rotary craft that does the same job but yet again you'll have to power that with something and I think if you've got the other mods in there like the aqueous accumulator or the end.io reservoir you might as well use those. Now these things need to be heated to over 100 centigrade and it will turn this the water into steam and that's what turns it standard steam engine design. You've got the temperature gauge here and the water gauge there. A uh, thing to note if it heats up beyond 100 and you don't have water in there, and then you put water in there, the thing will blow up and you'll have a lovely crater where your base used to be. Actually, it's not that big, but still. You have info tabs here for every single rotary craft machine and engine to give you more details about it. And as you can see here, given a source of heat below it and water piped in. Slightly stronger than previous engines, but I use this as the go-to first engine. Now, this is 32... Uh, newton meters, that's how much torque it provides, how much turning power, and 512 rads a second, so every second it rotates 512 times, although because of optical illusions it doesn't look like that. Every engine has a wattage, or in this case kilowattage, which is taken by ro um, multiplying one by the other, so 32 by 512 means this is 16,384 watts, or 16.384 kilowatts. Extra information can be found on the next tab where it breaks it all down for you. Sources, uh, consumables, risk of overheating. If it goes over 150 centigrade, it will blow up, even with water in it. So here's the quick thing to note. What I always use for this, there are other methods, but this is never rack. You can see on the tooltip at the top, with uh, just lit never rack and that never gets this above a dangerous temperature. It's night time at the moment, so it's not as hot as it can be. During the daytime, it heats up a little bit more, I think. Okay, maybe not. Oh, that's a clue to a later development. Um, ambient temperature stuff goes up in daytime, you can see there. <coughs> anyway, so yeah, that's going up to 30 ambient. Now this is a demonstration that with lava, doesn't necessarily 
uh, make it a good thing. You can put lava under there and it will slowly heat up, but this will heat up to 100, start producing power, heat up beyond 100, after 150, kaboom, the place melts down. Even with these wonderful things, which are cooling fins. You can put these on different machines and they will cool them down for you quite a bit, but with lava underneath, that doesn't help. You can see the temperature slowly climbing in Whaler at the top. So I'm not going to do that all the way because I don't want to leave a crater. Now this one I can't remember what I was going to use to demonstrate but it wasn't needed in the end so it's just a uh, modern art piece. I'll call it Steam Engine on Cobble. So yeah, that's the basic engine. As long as you've got a constant source of water and you've got never rack that you can light up then this thing is infinite power and it works very well for all the lower tier stuff which I will demonstrate now. Now, at the very beginning of the game these are the things I make. You've got two steam engines doing the same job both coming from the reservoirs, both with never rack lit underneath them. Now, this is a friction heater. It's very useful. It's a small item that you put in front of any engine and it will attach to the back of a vanilla furnace or multiple other machines, which we'll also go into later. And you can see at the top, temperature is 570. What this does, it uses the energy from any engine and it uses it to heat up the furnace, which in turn can now smelt stuff on its own. As a demonstration, actually I'll do that in a second, what we have here, as the stage before that, is the grinder. Um, this lovely block, you can get very early on, I mean, you're not even using up a stack of iron to get enough steel to make these at the moment. And these are the first things I ever make. Uh, you have a uh, machine that can basically grind up ores into three times ores, or flakes, which you don't need to smelt into the ores. And it also can be used to produce lubricant, but not yet. We'll explain that later. Now, the info, I'm not going to go into the... Uh, recipes like I said, but you can see them there. That just uses a bit more metals. Uh, it's got all the explanation about all the things it does, but the important thing is here. It requires 4 kilowatts of power, or 4096 watts, and the torque is 128 nanometer, uh, newton meters. Beyond that it doesn't matter about the speed, the rotational speed. So as long as we've got 4 kilowatts of power and 128 newton meters, we're fine. What does the steam engine provide? plenty of power but not enough torque. So this here needs uh, 128 and we are producing 32. So we need to multiply that up so that we've got enough torque being produced. And for that we can use a gearbox. Now this is a very basic gearbox, it's a wooden one. There are wooden stone, steel which you can make out of the same steel you made all of the rest of it out of, diamond and bedrock. Now the difference between them is purely tolerances um, and a bit of lubricant usage. The wooden one will, if it goes above a certain temperature, start to break and as its damage increases the amount of power it transmits goes down until eventually it breaks entirely. Now you can put lubricant in here to stop that happening, or to stop it heating up. It only starts to break over a certain temperature, uh, 90C. So I'll be able to demonstrate that shortly. The other ones, stone has a much higher tolerance of temperature. It doesn't even do temperature, it does a certain amount of speed, 2000 rats I believe. Steel has much higher, but if it doesn't get supplied lubricant it will start to get damaged straight away and that constantly uses up lubricant, which I'll go into later. Diamond, all it needs is one bucket of lubricant and it will never use it up and never take any damage after that. Now, bedrock is the best one, it doesn't require any lubricant and it can take, oops, and it can take any amount of um, power you can put through it. Some of these, like steel for example, can't take above a certain speed or a certain torque before they break bedrock can take anything and that's hard to get but I'll go into that later on so just to demonstrate this one's now turning this its torque speed and power are all ticked and it's starting to process the iron but remember what I said if you look at Whaler at the top the temperature is slowly going up when it reaches 90 centigrade it will start to break 
good thing about this is it doesn't need lubricant to keep the temperature down. What you can do is use these. Now these are made in a work table, either with a bunch of steel, so that'll be 369 steel because they take three each to make three cooling fins, or now I've always got excess tin and copper, you can do these to get two cooling fins. And that does the job. Now you see the temperature rising. If we stick this on top, temperature starts to maintain itself. In fact, if we break that, place it again, it will never go above the temperature it's at, 21C, and that will still process. Now you see, for every iron ore here, we are getting out three iron ore flakes, as I suggested earlier. It's not a fast process, but the more speed you put in later on with better engines, the faster it goes. But later on there's a process that does similar, but gives you 5 output as an average. So now we can put these in the furnace and see that just with the power of the steam engine and the friction heater, it's smelting all this. So compared to all the other mods, this has given us for absolutely uh, no energy, no consumables, apart from water, we are now tripling our ore and smelting it for free, basically. So it's already provided major benefits over other mods although we are using other mods, for the water. One thing to note is it will spit out any experience you supposedly make in the process. So if you come back after leaving a load, you'll get tons everywhere. So, moving on. Now, the engines we produce. The tier naught engine does a measly 8 newton meters and 256 rads. If you remember from these chaps, they do 32 newton meters and twice as much, so they do four times as much torque and twice as much rads. I didn't know you could turn that. <laughs> um, so these are significantly better, the steam engines, than these guys. And these guys use up RF. They don't use up a lot of RF, but my point is being that uh, there's no point in using these guys yet until you've upgraded them significantly. Now the tier one engines they use up 32 and 512 rads, so that's still half as good as a steam engine, free power. Uh, 32 and 512. Oh wait, no, it's exactly the same as the steam engine, but that is completely free and doesn't cost you RF. But the, you have to progress through every upgrade before you get to the maximum one. You can't just apply a tier 5 upgrade to a tier 0 engine. You have to provide a tier 1, 2, 3, etc. So the upgrade for this, to make it tier 1, is a redstone cooling upgrade. Now you've got gold, redstone, as you'd expect, HSLA, and the impeller. Now the impeller, you've seen how that's made, that's no problems. A lot of the recipes also take tin instead of steel on them, which saves you if you've got a lot of that. The thing you don't know here is ethanol crystals. If we look at the recipe for them, they are smelted from sludge. Now sludge is made from a fermenter. In fact, let's start at the other end of this. What we have here are all the raw materials we need for this uh, process. You need sugarcane and uh, some kind of plant matter. I just use saplings because I've always got loads. And some dirt. Now this item here is the fermenter in which you make it. Uh, it needs a steady temperature. At, as you can see at the moment, the ambient temperature is 14 centigrade at night. Now this needs a steady supply of water and a steady input of power, yet again we're using the steam engine. The power it needs is just 32 rads and 1024 watts. Now as we remember this thing does 512 rads and 16 kilowatts, so it's more than able to keep up with that for free. But what we need to do now is get the temperature up. There's two ways of doing this. In the biome I'm in which is a standard plains biome Oop, wrong button, nope wrong button again um, standard plains biome it is during the middle of the day uh, the adequate temperature, it's got to be in the green bar the other method is because I tend to live underground a lot it's usually too cold to do this and you stick a bucket of lava underneath now it should be noted when you do that oh, oh I've just put out the fire over there haven't I steam engine's going to die now uh, when I do that, uh, one second, anyway, yep, relit that. I won't show you, oh, I'll just tell you. When you put the lava under there, the temperature will shoot up 
it will be green for a short while and then go past the green and then you remove the lava it will go down again be green for a while so you can control the temperature that way but it's done manually and you have to do it quite often so what we need to do here is the very first phase is you put dirt in the bottom and sugar at the top and you get yeast which is lovely stuff and used for baking cakes usually now we don't need a shed load to demonstrate this but the next thing you do is as long as it's at the same temperature you can put the yeast in the top with any plant matter at the bottom and it will produce sludge and as you can see it doesn't always use up a yeast or a plant six staying on six there so you can get quite a bit more than a stack if you put in a stack I mean I put in how many ten and I got <laughs> see it keeps bringing them back <laughs> I got 19 out of that the next step with this is to smelt it luckily we have a furnace working here quite nicely and that gives us ethanol now as you saw back then you can use ethanol to make this to create the engine upgrade and that will mean you can use RF to use um, to make something the equivalent of a steam engine the only benefit I could see to that is space saving but you still got to cable in everything so that's the tier 1 engine Oh, don't want to miss out on XP even though this is a creative demonstration world the next stage is a lot more complicated and as you can see at this point I started to get <laughs> fed up with tiling everywhere although I did carry on later the next stage is tier 3 and that's magnetism it's a bit of a pain in the neck this one because you need magnetic coil upgrades now these chaps use inductive ingots that are made in a pulse jet furnace now I'll go into those momentarily because you usually need to start these off pretty early because they take a long time um, this is a magnetizing unit yet again I won't show you guys how to make this because you'll know as long as it's got a decent amount of rads going in it and the theory behind it is it'll spin the items in there while the coils are energized and it'll magnetize what's in there but alongside needing all of this you also need a redstone pulse going on it so I will demonstrate that you know I'm sure I had two of these traps once so if you've got mods like RF tools then you can just plonk down a timer job done and set it to any delay you want that's no problems but if you're back in the uh, vanilla age I was gonna say the stone age but I don't think that really counts then you can provide a pulse the old-fashioned way which is a couple of repeaters a bit of redstone and you've got a pulse you can do that with a lever as well if you want now this takes a long time unless you've got a really high speed engine going on it so when you first do it it'll take a while there you can see it can micro, uh, magnetize to two tesla, uh, micro teslas out of 720 this is not something you want to sit watching doing even at the faster speeds um, but it is worth noting you can stack these chaps but you have to do it at the beginning because if they're magnetized to different amounts you can't stack them again so yeah, let's leave that going. Now as I was saying, what you need for it is the inductive ingots, which are used in a pulse jet furnace. They're easy enough to make the dust, it's gold and redstone, but the pulse jet furnace itself is a bit more annoying. Because this chappy uses dun 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 uh jet fuel. Here we go. And the only thing that's fast enough to run it at your level is the micro turbine, which also uses jet fuel. So how do you make jet fuel? I oh, know I haven't got anything interesting in there, let's dump all that. I don't need those guys anymore. So how do you make jet fuel? Well, you need a fractionation fraction fractionation unit. And that's this guy. Now for this you need a gas tier. So you've got to go out there and fight a couple of those chaps. I hope you got Tinker's Construct crossbows at this point, which will make short work of them. But also you need a ton of other materials. You need ethanol which you already know how to make a lot of magma cream you should be familiar with eh? you should be familiar with its slime and blaze then you need blaze powder pardon me, and coal and these are the annoying ones neverac dust can only be made in a grinder and it's not quick and tar sand is made from soul sand in a grinder um, whatever on earth a drying bed is I've never seen that before in my life but that is also not quick but the good news is it doesn't use them up every single time 
every process has a chance to use the map. Uh, I don't know if it actually says that there. Gas tiers are never used. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, but these can be run off of a lovely little gasoline engine which runs off of that ethanol you know how to produce. To get it to run at a decent speed it needs a significant amount of rads 8192 to be precise. Gasoline engine only produces dun, 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 512 so you'll need an 8 times gearbox to do that. Now the steel one's quite effective with that but you will need lubricant and I will show you the lubricant process shortly after this. So let's place this chap down and fill him with fuel. You'll see everything running happily and this guy is starting pr to produce. Now we'll be able to see that it doesn't actually use up these every single time and just to annoy me it's probably going to now. Oh you see it's still left <laughs> some of them, some of them and some of them so that's good. Have I not done any of these before? Well obviously I have in my own world and multiplayer. So I'll do another one just to demonstrate. Yep, there you go. It only used up one tar sand to produce it that time. Now I've got it outputting to here. Obviously not. I think I might have to output from the top. Um, but that will give us the jet fuel. Now jet fuel, you know what, if that's not outputting I'm going to need a bucket or something. Back in a sec. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it does come out of the top. So that's fine. Now, as I said, jet fuel is needed for the pulse jet furnace, which also needs water as a coolant, so we've got the usual reservoir there, and the micro turbine which runs it. So both of them are going to need a source. Now, the micro turbine goes at a significant speed 131,000 rads. So it's very useful for things that need to spin really fast, i.e., the fractionation unit, but it doesn't provide enough power to run this because it only does 2 kilowatts. Uh, let's go around this side. These are both going to spin up at the same time and this can cause burns so be careful. Love that it can come out of any end of the barrel. Ok this thing's powering up but no speed or power yet because this thing's not receiving any. I think that needs to go in the bottom of that. <laughs> Skip ahead. Aha. There we go. So that's got plenty of fuel now and it's filling this, uh, spinning this thing up. But the speed takes a while to progress, I guess. Combine them, bleh, combine them both so they get a decent equal amount from now on. Yeah. Okay, so this thing's slowly spinning up. Now, the mixture we need for this was the uh, golden redstone. Let me grab a couple of them. Okay, so we got those. Oh, and as you can hear, this thing's starting to work noisily now. So if we put these chaps in here, it will process them quite quickly for us. Hmm, not sure what this side's for. And give us the inductive ingots. And the inductive ingots are what we need to make the next upgrade. Where have I hidden that thing? Around here somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> Have I forgot to put out the next engine upgrade? Oh dearie me. Uh, yeah, I can't see it anywhere. One sec. Oh no, of course I didn't. It's in the coils. Uh, thing being magnetised to 38. So yeah, you only need two of those chaps and then you can build your magnetic coil upgrade. I don't know how many of these you want to do. It's up to you. Um, so the rest of it you can easily find out on your own. See that actually smells them all quite quickly and that's going to burn through our fuel nicely. Still got plenty of each of them left. Now the next stage we need is the lubricant. Lubricant for the gearboxes. Now I have to advise at this point that the thing I always find best is no matter how short on materials you are go for diamond gears. Diamond gears only need one bucket of lubricant and they're done for life. Uh, it, poof, gotta stop doing that. And um, then you don't need to produce as much as you usually would, otherwise, you'll need an automated farm. For that, you have canola seeds and fans and our old faithful steam engines. Now, the steam engines running the fans give you quite a lot of range. I think they actually go a bit further than this. 
but the fans are Rotary Craft's own auto farming method. They actually pick up completed crops and leave the stems behind so they'll grow again, as I will demonstrate here. Um, they're just doing it to make me look bad now, aren't they? Oh, there we go. So it's chucked those down the end and left the bits behind. Now you get significant amounts of canola seeds per crop that's broken. So you will find that multiplies up quite significantly. I usually do it, you can pick it up with anything you want at the end. I usually do transport pipes into an ender chest just for ease. And this will be somewhere else being auto taken into a grinder. Now the grinder is the usual run by a steam engine and the wooden thing. And you put the canola seeds in there. And once they are processed, lovely and slowly, they will produce lubricant there. This is what I mean. Unless you're producing, unless you've got half a dozen of these guys combined grinding these things. What just died? Unless you've got half a dozen of these guys grinding these things, you're probably not going to uh, keep up with a bunch of gearboxes. So it's a good idea to have diamond gearboxes, so you only need a little bit. And that outputs via normal pipes into, in this case, a drum. So that's how you make your lubricant. You've got to find a way to pipe that to everything as well. Now, this chap here is the be all and end all of the game. This is where I like to think um, Rotary Craft ends. This is the extractor. You put ore in this end, and every stage it will have a chance of doubling its output. And the average is five or uh, five bars per ore. Uh, where is it? There is something somewhere that says that. Chance doubling uh, complex. Yeah, you need to provide water to it, and you need for each different stage different power and speed. Now, there's multiple ways to do this. Either you can get a, a big powerful engine that gives you a permanent 512 torque and 8000 rads, or you can switch it from speed to torque to speed to torque depending on which stage things are at. So you could keep it on speed and let a load of that process, then switch it to torque and let that process and that process, and then switch back to speed for that one. At this early stage in the game, you can run this, and you have to for the next item upgrade. So, it's a bit complicated, but I can demonstrate that here. This is just using a bog-standard gasoline engine. Gasoline engine, you know, runs off ethanol crystals. It's not amazingly powerful, it doesn't fulfill any of the criteria on either of these specs, but it does provide enough power, and you need 65 kilowatts of power as a maximum. So, what you can do is with this one engine, you can either run lots of engines and combine all their outputs and all of that and make it very complicated, or with this one engine, you can have two different channels going to the extractor. The first channel will have this chappy, a uh, gearbox, any gearbox, I'm just using bedrock because it's easiest, and it'll give you four times torque, and that'll give you enough torque, and then on the other side, 16 times speed. I have tried this with steel, and it does work fine, so you don't have to worry about it being too much. And that'll give you 16 times speed, and it'll fulfill all the speed criteria. But what it does mean if you, is you have to switch these chaps over occasionally. All you need are two bevels, one this end and one this end to change the input and everything will be fine. It's quick and easy, especially if you write it down like this. So I want to switch to the torque output here, which will mean orange. Yep, we can see it's orange. So switch to orange and that'll do all of them. And torque is orange again, switch to orange. And it's doing torque. <laughs> Sorry, it's torque for the two latter, uh, first and last and then speed for the middle ones. <laughs> So you can see this is processing that. What I'll do is I'll only do one iron to demonstrate, because otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> we will be here all day. Okay, and then it can't go any further, so we'll switch this back. It's uh, speed is purple. Okay. And then purple. Or have I just broken it? Oh, I know what I've done. It's supposed to be input purple, isn't it? Oh, Stupid me. Nope, what have I done? This is the speed one, right? Yep, yep, yep. 
Oh, switch those guys around. <laughs> there we go. I do know what I'm doing, really, people. <laughs> now, because this one doesn't need as much rads as that one, it goes quite a bit faster. This is just being annoying now. It's not doubling it at all. You've got an even chance at every single stage to double the ore. <laughs> it's just doing this on purpose, isn't it? Just to make me look bad. Uh, what are we doing? Purple and orange. So let's switch back to talk. Input orange. Now what have I done? <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, output. Output orange, is it? No. Give me a second. Uh, I know what I've done. This one I've got to change the input. This one I've got to change the output. Or the other way around. I'm lost now. <laughs> um... But it's vitally important you have an extractor up and running quite quickly, as quick as you possibly can, because, even though this is obviously not doing a very impressive job of multiplying up this iron ore, when you process iron ore, you have a small chance of getting tungsten. And tungsten is necessary for the next stage. God, I haven't even done this on here yet. Um, so we have tungsten here as a demonstration. Now, the recipe, if you go to recipe, it won't tell you where to get this from at all. It it will give you no details whatsoever. It's very annoying if you have to look all over the internet to find it. Um, but it comes from iron ore. It used to come from redstone ore, but now it only ever comes from iron ore. Come on in, you get. Not that I'm going to sit there and watch it. But it's like a 10% chance, I think, or even less than that. And for the next upgrade, you need tungsten. Now, the only way to smelt tungsten is, um, here we go, friction heater, uh, 1350 temperature. Now, these usually only go up to about 700, 800, but there is a way, I found online, of getting up to the right temperature without tearing any of your hair out or crying lots, and that is a 4 gearbox, a 16 gearbox, and a micro turbine. It only makes that noise because they're going at different speeds. And have now broken themselves lots. Well, that was smart of me. Uh, back in a sec. Okay, so obviously when I put these in place, I failed to... Um, why is nothing coming through there now? Okay, I must have rotated them or something. Yeah, obviously when I put these in here, the first time I failed to change the... Uh, that, um, add the lubricant to them, even though I test ran it a few times. Look, you can see the temperature's flying up now. What do we need? 1350 or something. 1350. And it's currently at 1240 something. And that's because the speed's still increasing, because the turbine takes a little while to spin up. 1.7, 1.8. Okay, let's say for 1300 already. <laughs> so this will be no problem whatsoever. here uh, picking our nose, tapping our feet, whatever. Whatever you do to pass time, come on, get there quicker. <laughs> and these chaps should then be able to smell. Whoa, look at that. They smell in seconds at that speed. Now, tungsten is used for a large amount of cool things, like the compound turbine. Uh, I couldn't tell you what that actually does without looking. Afterburner upgrade, steam turbine core, this is all very exciting stuff. Gas turbine, very exciting. But also used for, um, where is it? The flux conductance upgrade, which is what we need for the next tier of the engine. And that uses the inductive ingots we already know how to make, one since the tungsten and this thing, which isn't very important. Ah, and that gives us, there you go, the first engine we've got that is better than the engines we've used before. This is much better than the performance engine. <laughs> performance engine over here, poor little chap, struggling along still, is 128 uh, newton meters, 512 rads. 128 and 512, this is 215, uh, two, 512, when I can speak English, and 2048 rads. So this is going to be the first time you're going to want to use these engines, start using these engines over the alternatives, because they are now better. Which means we're going to need dun, 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 coolant. Now, to get that, 
you have this wonderful. Look, I couldn't be bothered to pay for here again, can I? You have this wonderful little thing called a refrigeration unit. Now, this. Uh, cut a long bit of spiel short. You need ice cubes in there and a lot of torque. Now, I've read up online the more torque there is, the more powerful there is. So, what do you think when you want torque? <laughs> There's a clue. Now, I recommend using other mods um, still, not just for the reservoir, but also glacial precipitator makes getting ice a lot easier for this stage. Otherwise, you've got to move around a lot of stuff manually and um, it gets quite complicated using just the own it, um, just rotary craft stuff. So what we have here is the glacial precipitator moving ice directly into the refrigeration unit. All of this, I don't know why they've got so much HUD for this, uh, UI for this. It's completely pointless. And then these are all connected to my personal favourite things ever, the hydrokinetic engines. Now these chaps need something you may not have seen yet. Which I haven't actually set up a process for yet. Uh, it's got diamond shaft cores, which are nice and cheap. Assuming you've got lots of diamonds. And paddle panels. Now these use the usual base panels and spring steel ingots. Now, thank the lord I don't have a texture pack on, because I couldn't figure what this out was out for ages. Actually, this has just been fixed in NEI. I am running version 5 of uh, Rotary Craft and all the other mods, and in version 4C it was not working and showing up, and I had to Google all over the place to find out how to make these. Now, these spring steel ingots are made with cold coke, redstone, and HSLA steel. They also need, in a blast furnace, 950 centigrade. Now, you may remember, blast furnaces we've used don't go up that high, but... Dun, dun, dun. This does. The heater here, if you remove that and... You know, I don't have any of the parts with me. Gah, one second. Okay, if you remove that and put your lovely little blast furnace in place, you can see the temperature shooting up there to significantly higher levels. So the spring steel ingot needs... Let's go back to the hydrokinetic. So the spring steel ingot needs 950, and this thing's in the 1300 range already. So we have no issues there, assuming you still have a decent supply of fuel. I do, because I'm cheating and using a creative fingerly bob underneath. So we'll have no problems making that. Now, hydrokinetic engines, I don't know if you know or not. I'm making this half for people who know a bit of the mod and half for people who don't. You can chain them, and the more you chain across, the output is the com combination of all of their torque. Now, in the torque of them, power 524 kilowatts. The torque is 16,000 newton meters. The speed is absolutely abysmal. But the higher this thing is, the more torque you get. So if it's over 64 blocks, you get 16 kilo newton. It's getting all dark. That's better. Um, and I always recommend using an ender tank to pump your lubricant around if you produce it somewhere else. This will need a constant supply of lubricant, but it's not too difficult to set up a small amount, a small farm that you'll need to do this, especially using the um, uh, steam engines. So now you've got a significant amount of torque coming out of here. In fact, this is going to be uh, 1632, 64,000 newton meters. And all that we're missing now is the final piece of the puzzle. There we go. And the more torque it's got, the better the refrigeration unit runs. You'll see what I mean. All of this UI is pointless. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what's, it, what's it doing? You can just have a tiny little progress bar there that'll do the same thing. <laughs> and it'll go all the way along. And it'll rain again. Woohoo! Sorry, you probably want to see what's going on, don't you? Well, not much. Then it'll get to the end and keep going. <laughs> it's just, what's the point? And then you get liquid nitrogen. You do also get something that comes out here occasionally as a waste product, which is dry ice. There is currently, as far as I'm aware, zero use for that. Although I only know that as of 4C. So in 5, there might be a use. Let's see if it gives us some, otherwise I'll go looking. Oh, cry ice. It's concerning Freudian slip there. You gonna give us one? I don't know what the chance is. 
Um, recipe, that's how you get it. Usage, no, no use for it. So I tend to pump it straight into a trash can. I love those trash cans. Which mod are they from? Extra utilities, yeah. I just tend to just pump them straight into there. Job done. And then you get liquid nitrogen. The more torque it is, it doesn't make it faster, it gives you more liquid nitrogen as a result. Otherwise you'll get a lot less than 4,000, i.e. 4 buckets every time. And that one only gave you 2 buckets. Oh yeah, because it's 2 buckets every time, because we've done 2 already. I know what I'm talking about. Don't you say I don't. Um, so yeah, a bit of mod combinations there make your life a lot easier. There is one thing I've just remembered that I forgot to tell you guys. And that is with the uh, canola seeds. When you're processing them in the grinder, you will get canola seed husks as an output. Now, I tend to either bin these, or if you're desperate for lubricant, you can use them in a centrifuge machine. Now, I'm not fussed enough to go into that, because it's not that important. It basically just It's a basic machine that needs a bit of speed under it, and it will produce more lubricant from canola seed husks. And if you get a ton of them like this, you might want to do that, otherwise bin them, whatever's easiest for you guys. So that will take us up to tier 3 engines. Now tier 4 and 5 engines are more difficult, and I will not be going into them in this video, but this should be enough to get people started on the basics and get you 5 times ore going with that thing. Because now you'll be able to use these engines, these engines here, I mean they don't take a lot of power, I've got an exact amount at the beginning. You'll be able to use those engines to make this process smaller, uh, make that process easier, all of the above. And make life a lot easier for yourself. Where are they? Come on, I know you're here somewhere. I can't remember where the beginning is. <laughs> made more than I thought. So yeah, um, they use up... Uh, was that the one we made? No, that's the one we made, isn't it? You know, I cannot remember for the life of me now. Yeah, that's the one we made. Um, so it uses up 2,700 RF a tick. So it's a significant amount, but it's um, it's better than the other engines. And the next step, it four times the torque and doubles the rad, and the power goes up to 23,000 RF. And not least of all, this behemoth here at 193,000, which is just ridiculous power. So, um, so yeah. Uh, this is definitely the good middle ground to use, maybe in bursts, unless you've got a decent power system already set up. So, I hope that has been helpful for you guys, and if there's a lot of requests for it, I'll do another video on the last two stages, because they're just as annoying. <laughs> and we'll see how we go. I hope that's helped. Bye-bye. You know what, I've just come back in game because I've remembered something vitally important. I spent hours and hours and hours working on something for this map, which you guys didn't even sh ah! which you guys didn't even see. Look at that! Isn't it amazing? I did that and then I built all, all these walls around it so that nobody can even see anything. Oh, you're seeing the kind of innards here, aren't you? And I was really impressed with this thing and yes, it did only take seconds, I'm sorry. And I was very close to getting it demolished by a um, hungry node, which I had to murder. So look! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> anyway, bye-bye.